Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I am Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is business. What do we have today, Jamie? Today we're going to talk about um, how businesses, um, specifically restaurants, because that's our field, how they uh, blame the economy for downturned business other than looking at what's going on in their actual business or restaurant. So um, we, we went to a restaurant just recently and we had an experience that we want to talk about. Yep. Now um, we were away for We were this. away. We were away. We were in Phoenix. We were at a nice resort in Phoenix. And one of the restaurants right there on the hill, which is, I don't know if it's part of the resort, not part of the resort. It's, it's, it's within the resort. It's independently owned. I'm not sure how it works. Famous restaurant though. A very well known, well known restaurant. Well, a very well known restaurant in the in Phoenix, the area. In the Phoenix area. Area, yes. um, they're not known for high end food. They're, I mean, they're not known for a fine dining place. They're known because they're a landmark establishment, and they do barbecue, steakhouse, yes. like that. Not upscale, but that's what they're known for. And the interesting thing is, we heard from the locals, because we know locals in Phoenix that, oh, you don't go there, right, because there's, there's nothing good there. Um, we also heard from people that were in our group that actually had an experience there that thought it was terrible. And then we had an experience there that we thought was just really bad, um, unacceptable. And here's the thing. Restaurants like this, Jamie, they blame the economy for a downturn in business. I'm not sure if that's a specific case, but they typically blame the economy. When, some, when, when they have a downturn in business. But let's actually go through what, what we experienced. I will say that for a destination or a landmark restaurant, people go there to, to see all the things that they have. And it's a very showy, showy. Um, place. Um, it's a barbecue place, so they have a bull sitting outside um, in a cage, um, and he was sitting there. And when you walk in, um, you know, when you walk towards the door, you can see the bull. And so it's a destination. So kids love it. They're up there looking at the bull um, and that kind of thing. Then right. when you walk, it's in great the for kids to run around. By the right. way, it's a it's, it's great. a great kids restaurant. I I would definitely say that. But as we were walking in, it definitely seemed um, dirty. Um, not very well kept restaurant. Well, you notice the smell of the animal outside, the smell of the bull outside. Right. You know, first set the first tone like, oh, like, are we going to a, a zoo or are we going to eat? Right, exactly. So when I walked in, I kind of, you know, noticed we had to walk up a ramp, a very steep ramp to get into the, um, into the restaurant. And it just didn't, it didn't set... A, a very nice ambiance for us at least and you know they were busy so it they were definitely very busy. sets an ambiance for other people but maybe just not for what we were looking for um, but which we, is a good point because everything's subjective you eat food you go to a restaurant your experience everything is subjective to what you're looking for in the mood that you walked into before or whatever just happens to you so exactly so we sat down at the bar we were just looking for a quick little bite we had no idea what their menu was even like um, and we were just looking for a glass of wine um, and we were just going to sit there and, uh, you know, just relax for a few minutes. They had big TVs. They had the Olympics on. Um, so we were just going to, you know, just relax for a little right. bit. Right. So we went right to the bar. So, you know, as we were sitting there and observing um, what was going on in the restaurant itself, um, everybody seemed to be moving. They had a very young staff. And as I was sitting there and I had ordered a glass of wine and I was relaxing, trying to decide if I wanted any food. And... The bar back or the bartender or somebody who was helping the bartender walked in front of me at the bar with chew in his mouth. He was chewing he was tobacco. Chewing tobacco. And you could see the bulge on, on his lip and I was just very taken aback by that. I, I can't stand when servers are chewing gum. Right. It's, a, it's a distraction. But this person was actually had tobacco in his mouth behind the bar, restocking the bar. And he wasn't... He was a young kid. I would definitely probably say between the age of 18 and 21. Maybe. Yes, yes. Um, and the bartender was nice. He was very nice. Um, he took, um, you know, he, he took our order and then he pulled up a chair, a stool, basically sat in front of us. With his back, with towards, his back towards us. And started watching the, the Olympics. Olympics. <laughs> 
Now, yes, it was towards the end of the night, but I couldn't believe that he actually sat down, down and watched, watched Olymp the Olympics. Right. So now here is the other thing. We're vegetarians. We're trying to order something. You know, we go to a place. You want you want to give them some money. Um, yeah, we told him you were, we were vegetarians. We told him we were vegetarians. Basically, the only thing he said was, sal what did he say, salads? He said, well, we have a salad. We have a salad, which, you know, okay, whatever. Um, from time to time, we do like French fries. I wasn't eating French fries at the time. Um, so we just ordered French fries. They were like, two, what, two bucks? Yeah, I said, so like, let's, let's just, just get something. Let's just get something, right? So he says to us, he says to us, he goes, I'm going to put these in the kitchen, but I'm going to put on your ticket that you want, you asked for them hot, like in hot as in cooked. He goes, because if not, they're going to give you stuff that's just sitting around in the basket that's been sitting there. And we're like, <laughs> okay. You know, so really? he's uncomfortable serving the food that he's serving. Now, the french fries came out and I, I could smell them and I was like, the, the smell was awful. The oil, we didn't eat them, we didn't touch them. I was like, the oil's rancid or something, like rancid oil, it's just something's off. They don't even smell good. It was just like, oh, gross. We pushed them aside. You got your glass of wine. You didn't even finish your glass of wine. I didn't. I mean, <laughs> maybe the wine is, gr the wine wasn't bad, but you know, when we go out, we want a decent glass of wine, else we don't drink. And I'm currently right now not drinking. So you barely had half the glass of wine. It was a small glass of wine. But here's the kicker, you know, we go back the next day to our group and we start talking about restaurant experiences and people in our group are like, oh, we went to that restaurant on the hill. And we were like, oh boy, brace yourselves, right? So they went with seven people. Their overall story was that the server came and took their appetizers, right? But she spaced her order out so long. They went, they, people in our group, we're a restaurant marketing group, right? So we go to restaurants, we go hungry to, to look for ideas, and we go hungry because we're in the restaurant business and we want to eat. So these guys like to eat, this group. And they ordered a bunch of appetizers, but after the she never took their entree order until after the appetizers came, came out. out. Yes. So of course you start eating, right? And you get full, you know, you go to a Mexican restaurant, you want to order before you fill up on the chips and salsa, right? You go to a restaurant, you want to order before you fill up on bread, right? Because then all of a sudden you're not hungry. So the restaurant loses a lot of money, potential money from a practice like that. So they, they took their appetizer order. Their app appetizers came out. Appetizers came out and one person said, where's our second, what is it, onion rings or something? Potato skins. Potato skins. Where's our second order of potato skins? And she goes, oh, I figured you didn't need those. So you I, had enough food. You had enough food, so I canceled the second order. She never even placed the order. <laughs> she never canceled it. She just never did it upon herself to not place Because she thought order. that was enough food. Now, I'm sorry, but... If somebody's ordering food, you let them order you, what you, you If somebody's... Right. So as a server, that's not their call as a restaurant employee. That's not their call to decide what a guest is not going to eat after they've placed their order. Um, so now they're getting full, right? Well, now they're full. Now they're full. And they haven't ordered entrees. They haven't ordered entrees yet. yet. And now that they're pissed off because the server's now really decided what they should eat or not, or how much they should eat. So now they go to order, and he said that they ordered, what, two or three less entrees? They ended up getting less entrees because people decided they were going to share. Share entrees. So then when it comes for dessert... They didn't order anything. They didn't order anything. And they, they always, are dessert people. <laughs> they calculated uh, from seven people that they spent between $120 to $150 less than they normally would have because everybody would have gotten a dessert, three more entrees, um, the order of potato skins that was never served. So they calculated over $120 of lost revenue to that restaurant. So now here's the main thing. Between our experience and their experience, Where's management? Isn't management going around, walking around, saying that somebody doesn't have tobacco in their mouth and they're not sitting down on the job with their back to customers? I never saw anybody roaming the floors other than the young servers. Very young servers. Not young to say the young servers are, are not good. If they're properly trained, they're fine. But anybody at any age, if they're not trained, they're a detriment to your business. A lot of people just don't have the initiative to be able to work in a business and run it like it's theirs without the proper training. We do a ton of training. But now, I'm not saying that this is the case with this restaurant, Jamie, but typically restaurants that provide terrible service like this, they're the ones that claim, oh, business is so bad at the economy, the economy. Well, yeah, because the economy's worse now or worse than it was years ago. People are more picky about where they're going to go eat. 
But if you have good service, they're going to pick you. But if you have bad service, they're not going to pick you. And if you're a tourist trap, you're only going to get those people in one time. And I guarantee you, if we go back for the same conference next year to the same place, none of us, none of us are going to go back. Probably go back to that because out of that room with 100 people, 200 people now, our room of our conference, that's two bad reports for that restaurant. Nobody's going to go there. There was actually a third report which was decent, but the same type of story. Same type of story. Yes. They didn't. They, they liked the food though. Right. They, they liked the food. They liked the food, but you know. They said the service wasn't great. Service wasn't great. So if you're going to Phoenix, where we were, or anywhere, there's a lot of choices of restaurants. It's easy to go onto your to your phone now and go on with Yelp. Now we we don't. I don't believe in going and and. I believe in making our own reviews and and not reading all of the other reviews. True, but I don't I don't believe in going on and bashing a restaurant. Right. I believe in calling management and saying, hey, this is what happened. And then if management, then if you don't get a good enough ma answer from management, then I feel you have a right to go on and bash a restaurant online. But the bottom line is, if you don't let somebody know and you don't give them a chance to make up for it, then you really have no. You mean did, that that's your first recourse of action, not going online and giving somebody a one star review and bashing them up and down. And yeah, it might have been terrible, but if you call a restaurant and they give you your money back. Restaurants I mean, don't intentionally give you bad service. They just don't know any better. They don't I know any better. You get a bad employee. Exactly. If, lack of training, lack of direction. Right. The manager's not on top of it. So give the restaurant the benefit of the doubt to make those changes, try the restaurant again, and then make a review. Then make a review. So um, if you're a restaurant and you want more information on uh, on my business tips, go to 50mistakes.com, 50mistakes.com. I have tons of great videos, a lot of great content up there on how you can improve your business or restaurant uh, with all these free tips, 50mistakes.com. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching.